Good morning. We'll call the um, Wednesday, August 28, 2019 City Council meeting to order at this time. Please join us in the invocation and the pledge. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon our beautiful community of Tyler and all of the citizens that reside here. We thank you for the anticipated change in the seasons. We thank you for the possibility of rain today and the blessings that it brings also. We ask your continued guidance for this council to give us wisdom and guidance and give us the courage to serve and make the best decisions for our citizens. We ask all of these things in your name, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we'll uh, approve the minutes from the June 26th meeting. So moved. A uh, motion by Westbrook, a second by second. Uh, Broderick. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. At this time, we will come down and recognize uh, some outstanding employees that have served our city for a collectively 145 years. So we'll be right down. I'm not used to wearing a tie. I'm having a hard time today <laughs> getting adjusted. Uh, I, I will just tell you, it was picture day today. If not, you, I would not be in a tie. So, <laughs> um, uh, so okay, let's get to it. Uh, Mr. Ross is a crew leader with the streets for 20 years. Here we go. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thomas Whitworth, a police officer for 20, 25 years. Thank you. Uh, Lance Parks, police officer, 25 years. Thank you. Uh, Ronnie Tickle, t police officer, 25 years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jude Carpenter, police officer, 25 years. Thank you. Thank you. 
And James Holt, police officer, 25 years as well. Thank you, James. <laughs> I, I, I would like to say this, that's 125 years of police officers. Uh, one thing that sets Tyler apart with an incredible, fantastic police department is the longevity of so many of these men and women that serve us. It provides really a great level of maturity when they're interacting with the public. So I can't thank our police officers enough for the great work they do, and especially uh, for the, the guys that are in the uh, older like that, this 125 years we just saw, how they mentor the young officers coming in. It's a huge benefit to our organization, and we appreciate them very much. So thank you. That's it. At this time, we will have a public hearing uh, on um, the proposed budget, and we'll introduce the city manager to uh, present the budget, please. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Hines and City Council, it is our privilege to be before you today to present the proposed fiscal year 2019-2020 programs and services for the city of Tyler. The budget presentation and implementation plan aligns with the city's strategic plan, which in itself is tied back to Tyler First in the City Council's <coughs> direction. We are continuing the path that was set out in 1996 with the blueprint as adopted by the city leaders and continued to today with this elected body, which set the direction for the community where we would be debt free on our property tax levies and focusing on essential services in a quality manner for our citizens and businesses. The proposed programs and services before you today, totaling $208 million for the full fiscal year 2020 budgets of operations, capital improvement projects, and over three dozen funds, represents the input and analysis of hundreds of staff, reviewing their ability to enhance their services and answer to the citizens who've asked for improvements. We do not shy away from finding opportunities for improvements, and the budget process forces that review and analysis to refine our services. This means cutting funding where appropriate and increasing resources for programs that are having success. It involves understanding priorities for the community, such as parks of improvement as identified by the city council or public safety as shown in citizen surveys. This budget reflects the urgencies of the community will and provides responsive, responsible solutions. From 2015 to 2018, the city has struggled with general fund revenues which pay for those services that do not have a direct revenue source. This goes towards police, fire, parks, the library, municipal court, and general government services. Several factors have come into play during last year's budget development that provided recovery and strengthened the general fund. We look forward to another year of modest but incremental growth in general fund revenues. Total revenues for fiscal year 2020 are projected to be $72.79 million, roughly 5.5% greater than fiscal year 2019 budget. We've seen sales and use tax revenue experience growth again, increasing 7.01 percent between 2018 and 2019. We are projecting a cumulative 4.95 percent growth for fiscal year 2019 and keeping projections flat for fiscal year 2020, although we should note that we have developed our projections on sales and use tax differently than in past years. Sales and use tax is generated off several different components, ranging from retail, restaurants, service wholesalers, and agriculture and mining. We developed revenue projections off of each of these different components as they showed different trends during the past few years. The oil and gas industry especially influences certain areas of the sales tax, especially with mining and service, and we worked to balance the volatility of this primary revenue stream with more nuanced projections. 
The volatility of the sales and use tax is still heavily tied to the ups and downs of the oil and gas economy. We've seen the impact of oil and gas downturns in sales tax revenue in 2016 and 2017, causing the city to reduce services and make expenditure cuts into public safety programs to make up for the unexpected drop in revenue. With 5 percent growth we've seen in sales tax revenue for fiscal year 2019 and expenditures coming in lower than budgeted, we are recommending using $3 million of our end of year fund balance for this fiscal year to modify the means we maintain our general fund revenue or general fund reserve accounting. We work to maintain a 15 percent reserve fund for general fund services and our current method of accounting for this depends on accrued revenue based throughout the year. With this $3 million, we are recommending moving to combine with the $3 million in the oil and gas fund to have a combined $6 million in the rainy day fund for operational reserves that can be fluid and available during future recessions. This rainy day fund will provide stability and for essential services such as public safety during that recession period and rebuilt during growth periods. Property taxes continue to make up approximately 31 percent of the revenues collected by the general fund and we will go into more detail on the property tax revenue projections later in this presentation. The City's franchise fees are also budgeted to remain at the same level as last year's budget. It should be noted that the State passed legislation this year that reduces some of the amounts we collect in this category, specifically related to telephone and cable TV franchise fees. The legislation allows a company that provides both cable TV and telephone services to pay only on the service that generates more revenue. In most cases, this will be cable TV and will reduce the amount the city collects in franchise fees by $236,000 for this coming year and $314,000 for fiscal year 2021. I do want to note that after some decline, fines and penalty review revenues appear to have stabilized. The projected revenues for fiscal year 2020 budget remain relatively flat compared to fiscal year 2019 budget. We are recommending a modest tax rate increase from 24.4452 cents to 25.99 cents per $100 valuation for fiscal year 2020. With a net taxable value of $9.06 billion, we are within the city limits. The additional rate increase of 1.5448 cents will generate $2 million over the current rate with a net taxable, full net taxable revenue amount to be $22,545,337. At our proposed rate of 25.99 cents per $100 valuation, a home valued at $150,000 would be assessed city property taxes of approximately $389.85 per year, or $32.48 per month. This 1.5448 cent increase would translate to $23.17 increase for the year for the homeowner of the same $150,000 house. The major change in property valuations for fiscal year 2019 tied directly to the addition of the former ETMC, now UT Health East Texas, as taxable value on the rolls. This year we experienced closer to our regular rate of growth in values and additions, which reflects the confidence that our citizens and newcomers have in Tyler as a location for residential, business, and industrial growth. Our maintenance and repair program for our water and wastewater system follows the blueprint model of cash funding to the full extent that we can. During the next 10 years, we expect to cash flow $56 million in utility system improvements. For fiscal year 2020 alone, we intend to spend approximately $11.8 million in cash on water and wastewater system improvements. The proposed utility rate increases mirror the rate modifications that we set for the current fiscal year. There will be a 5 percent base rate increase on water um, and on wastewater, which equates, equates to a 66 cent base increase on water and an 81 cent base rate increase on wastewater along with a $3.24 increase on the regulatory compliance fee, which is directly linked back to debt payments for wastewater system improvements required by the Environmental Protection Agency and the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. The increase for residential users who consume 5,000 gallons of water a month will be $6.01 per month. For those industrial and businesses that use more than 25,000 gallons per month, they will see a base rate increase as well. While the impact on this will vary depending upon the, how much water is used by the customer, for those commercial customers consuming 30,000 gallons of water per month, as an example, we'll see an increase of $13.51 per month. We reviewed the utility fees associated with new construction to ensure that our costs for materials and services are captured. With this in mind, we are only recommending adjustments to our, for our water and sewer tap fees for cost recovery of these services. 
We did make adjustments to our residential rate with this current fiscal year and continue to, on our annual review of CPI rates uh, for future increases. We continue to incrementally move residential customer rates so that residential services are not subsidized by commercial accounts and better reflect the true cost of service. The coming year's rate change based on our CPI increase of 1.9% is 31 cents, bringing the monthly rate to $16.70. We conducted a Lean Six Sigma study for our tire disposal cost recovery. The current program allows for up to four tires each month that can be placed at the curb for collection with, uh, that can be paced to the curb for collection with no fee, as well as drop off at the recycling center for $5 a tire at any time. Beginning on October 1st, we will change the program to have customers call in for collections for, of the tires at their curb and a fee of $5 per tire assessed with the collection. We anticipate this will provide $65,000 per year in savings on collections, plus additional revenue from the curbside pickup towards solid waste services. Since its adoption in 1995, the Half Cent Fund for Capital Projects has been an incredible success story for Tyler and serves as a model for responsible, sustainable capital program funding. Having served in other cities, I am grateful that our city leaders had the foresight to create this source of cash to fund a, the capital improvement program on an ongoing basis rather than be dependent on debt to fund these projects. After 24 years of the program in action, I want to promote its impact on our city. We ran the model for what the addition to our property tax rate may be if we use debt on the $170 million we spent since the half cent adoption. Our rate now, now be approximately 46 cents instead of 24 cents if we had to add an interest and sinking portion to the tax rate. If we didn't issue any further debt than the $170 million during the past 24 years in this model, we would not be able to fully pay that off and get to a tax rate of 25 cents until the year 2036. For the coming fiscal year, we have several projects that move forward to benefit traffic, quality of life, drainage, and public safety using the $15.1 million we expect to generate and the available funds generated during the current fiscal year to potentially spend a total of $28.5 million. Fire Station Number 1 at Palace and Gentry and Fire Station Number 4 at Cherry Hill and Cumberland are under construction. The design phase for improvements of Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard are underway. We have improvements underway for Wildert and Fun Forest Parks, along with drainage and roadway improvements. The Half Cent Fund will also continue to pay for the traffic modernization study that began this year, a major process of improvement to the connections between our traffic signals. We plan to cash fund an amazing $5.945 million in water system improvements with an additional $666,000 in bond funded water system repairs. This continues the work of improving water quality throughout our city with the replacement of water lines, looping lines were adequate, and improvement of filters at the Golden Road Water Treatment Plant. Fiscal year 2020 will also see significant investment in our wastewater system, as we expect to spend $5.821 million on projects, all paid in cash. We'll continue rehabbing the Southside Wastewater Treatment Plant clarifier and a lift station pump replacement. The primary treatment clarifier at the Southside Wastewater Treatment Plant is a major step towards restoring the primary clarifiers that protect the pumps and motors, increasing the plant capacity, and better removing several types of solids, resulting in a cleaner water product for discharge into Mud Creek. We also continue to purchase easements for the proposed new regional wastewater treatment plant further south from Tyler as we begin planning toward that project, which is a major undertaking for our future. Regional cities like Tyler will play a crucial role in providing services and expertise to our neighbors as we continue to grow together. To that end, the city of Tyler purchased 219 acres southwest of Bullard nine years ago. This year, the mayor has asked that we devote an additional one cent for the Quality Street Commitment Fund, bringing the pledged property tax commitment to two cents. This brings our funded amount to $1,546,952. Prior to fiscal year 2017, our asphalt seal coat program was funded with whatever the general fund could provide. The council set a goal of 81 to reach for the pavement condition index that is conducted on all city asphalt streets and set aside a penny from the tax rate to begin funding a street maintenance program. Last year, with a commitment of 1.25 cents of the tax rate for the asphalt seal coat program, we were able to spend approximately $842,000. Our goal this year is to designate two cents of the tax rate for the asphalt seal coat program to continue progressing towards an average rating of 81. 
We will continue with an overlay budget from the half cent fund of $3.5 million a year, which was the challenge set with the 2016 PCI review to maintain or improve the average rating. This year we will be able to maintain 27.7 lane miles with seal and onyx seal coat. With the additional penny added as part of the quality street commitment, we should see in fiscal year 2020 a total of 78.9 lane miles of seal and onyx seal coating on our public streets. This represents a 284 percent increase in our preventive maintenance, which enhances the conditions of our roads, our largest asset for future generations. We continue our mission to serve our community through our parks and recreation programs by continuing to invest in our services with the fiscal year 2020 budget. There is a sizable investment into our premier recreational facility, the Glass Recreation Center, with $107,582 towards improvements. This will include restroom renovation, new weight equipment, interior repainting, and the gym floor being resurfaced. Unfortunately, we are the victim at times of vandalism in our park restroom facilities throughout the city during nighttime hours. The fire in the Southside Park bathroom a couple of years ago put that bathroom out of commission for over half a year. It cost approximately $75,000 to repair. We are requesting to install timer locks on our park's restroom so they are locked between dusk and dawn. This will work to prevent future damage to these facilities and reduce our costs. With the recent opening of Legacy Trails, we have now over four miles of new trails to service our citizens and visitors. With the additional funding of $25,000 that is proposed, we do ensure that they are maintained and mowed to provide a quality environment to those enjoying the natural beauty of our trails and woods that surround them. This year, we replaced our library roof. The cost savings in the amount of $179,000 will allow more funding for facilities and equipments in this year's budget as it goes towards an estimated half million dollars in various roof repairs and replacements. We also plan to install new parking meters for the downtown that will allow for credit card, coin, and mobile payment, thus enhancing our citizens' experience. The majority of the expenditures, however, will be dedicated towards purchase of a new fire engine. In fiscal year 2019, we worked toward and are now proposing for fiscal year 2020 a more regular replacement schedule for our fire engines and ladder trucks to ensure that we have the highest functioning vehicles available to our firefighters. Engine trucks are frontline service vehicles that provide rapid response to all emergencies, responding to every service call, and have a life expectancy of 12 years. Ladder trucks are specialized vehicles that provide aerial water flow and elevated rescue capability with an optimum life experience of 15 years. The replacement plan will assist Tyler Fire Department in fulfilling its mission to protect lives and property from fire and other hazards through incident mitigation, education, and prevention. As part of our city's blueprint for doing business, we want to build a sustainable approach to employee compensation that provides incremental merit-based pay increases. This year, we plan to offer all qualifying employees a merit-based pay increase of 2%, plus the ability to qualify for an additional 1% lump sum to be paid out quarterly. We conducted a market rate study on 83 positions this year in order to bring 157 employees up to a higher pay rate that is more comparable to pay for those positions seen in similar cities or institutions in our region. We hope to conduct at least another 43 market studies this coming year on positions that we see as potentially not at market rates or have difficulty in recruiting. You will see this focus on workforce investment reflected in our increasing retention from, from 2014 to present. Through employee engagement and staying competitive with our market comparisons, we hit a new high for the city on 92.2 percent retention of employees. We continue to work on improvement and building up an exceptional team of public servants for our community. During the past three years, we have made substantial adjustments to our health fund and its policies. As a self-insured institution, we have pursued changes that have balanced the program's cost between the city and the employee. The health fund has seen a good year with relatively few major claims. With the state of the health fund, we recommend no increases in premiums for employees and to lower the out-of-pocket out of maximum from $7,350 to $6,350 for employees. It will potentially add $47,169 in claim expense to the health fund, but at this time, the health fund is in position to absorb these costs. As per the budget and tax rate adoption schedule per state statutes, the Council has one action it must take today. It must hold the first of two public hearings at this time to allow for citizen comment. The second public hearing is set for our next regularly scheduled City Council meeting on September 11th. We expect to bring the tax rate and budget to the Council for adoption at your meeting on September 25th.
questions of, of Ed at this time. I've got one question, yes, and you may not be able to answer it off the top of your head. <coughs> in past years, when we do the budget, we have a slide in there that shows what Tyler's tax rate is compared to other cities. So if we go to the two point or the 2599, how does that compare with other cities? The next lowest of, kind of our size and market um, <coughs> just are just was, was Sugarland at about 34 cents. Um, and so that's, we, we are still significantly below all other cities um, at 25.99. Um, and like I said, it's just, the only times you ever see anything that's where anybody gets lower than us is for just kind of some aberrations. Stafford, Texas, for example, has zero, but they are all industrial based with very little residential. Um, and so they're basing theirs primarily off of sales tax. Um, but any, as far as city that of, over 25,000 population um, is going to, no, they can't compete with the 25.99. So, um, now, Sugar Land, that's the M and O rate. That is, is, I think that's the total, both M and O and INS. <coughs> and for uh, just, I, if, if, for M and O being maintenance and operation. So typically right. for adoption of tax rates, this is where I get a little scholarly. The adoption of tax rate is typically, actually there's two tax rates that most people talk about when they talk about a tax rate. For everybody else in Smith County in the world, um, when they, you see like 34 cents, that's actually two different tax rates. The M&O, maintenance and operations, um, which is for Tyler, we're recommending a 25.99, and the INS, which is interest and sinking, uh, which we are recommending for zero um, for the company. Well, I mean, I think it's important, others, to, it's important to be less scholarly and say that we have no general obligation debt. That is exactly what it means. Right, yes, so we have no debt, so that's different. I, uh, to answer Don's question a little bit more, I, I did a study last year uh, when I did a lot of budget presentations uh, uh, around. So we looked at cities that were standalone like Tyler, right? Uh, like a San Angelo or a Beaumont, cities that are not tied to suburban areas like Sugarland, so that causes a little bit different component to Sugarland. But just cities that stand alone, Abilene, Amarillo, those type. Waco. Yeah, Waco. And uh, the average M&O uh, was uh, 40 cents. And about the mean was about 45 because we actually brought down everybody's calculation, right? So mean's about 45. Then you add on the, uh, uh, the insure, I mean the, the debt portion. And I think people like Waco get up to about 75 cents right now, 70, 75. So that would be uh, it's, a quite, it's, it's a huge difference from what this community does. But we have always focused on basic services and not a lot of uh, non-traditional uh, city government type items that several cities have gone into. We have stayed basic services. So uh, that tends to be the difference. As a comparison, just I mean, um, staff just handed me the slide that we had had with the previous presentation. For Waco, as an example, it has a tax rate of 77.62 oh, for the property up. tax rate, okay. of which 67 cents of that is the MNO and 10 cents of that is INS. Longview, our neighbor, has a tax rate of 50.99 <coughs> uh, cents, and of that, 38 cents is MNO, with 13 cents of that as INS. Well, it, it, it brings up another, another thought that I, I want to say, that Waco, for example, uh, I, we called last year about that because I was curious, and I think they had about 1,400 employees. Uh, their population is not much different than Tyler, and by the <coughs> way, it actually, um, um, uh, the daytime population is not much different uh, because we, we surge up to the 230 number, 230,000 people a day. Yes, so it's very similar. Uh, they have about 1,400 employees. We have about 850. Uh, so that's why I am extremely proud this year uh, not to be increasing insurance costs and actually doing a pay raise for our hard working employees. And I will tell you that when we, um, and, and that this is a topic I, I'll get into a little bit later, I'm sure, but you know, at the point that we have dips in sales tax, because as much as we like to say that we're uh, uh, have 
done away with the risk of the oil and gas. It's not true. And there's so many components of that sales tax that fluctuate based on not retail sales or going out to restaurants, but the actual products that flow through this community. While a, a, a Odessa and Midland have to worry about a 20% decline, uh, Tyler has to worry about a 3 or 4% decline when the oil price goes down. Longview has to worry about a 10%. So when we actually went down, uh, because of our very low tax rate and we don't have, we have no room, right, that we actually had to cut a million dollars out of the police budget. And I've never done that and I will never ever do that again and I never want a council to be in this position again. But at that time, we were also not doing any pay raise and we were increasing premiums uh, on insurance on our employees. And just by knowing what, what I know and I've learned that we have so many fewer employees than other communities our size in this state that we need to make sure we value our employees. So I am so proud this year that we are able to do the pay raise and I never want us to get in a position again, and this is my last budget, but then I never want us to get in a position again that we are cutting public safety funds because the sales tax didn't decline and we didn't have the proper reserve fund to deal with it. Amen. Sorry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just feel a little passionate about that. So thank you. Any other questions? We do have one card. A, a, a Sheila Torres. State your name and address for the record, and and uh, and you you wrote on your card Greater Tyler Association of Realtors. Yes, sir. Or what what's your position with? I'm them? the governmental affairs director for the Greater Tyler Association of Realtors. Great. I was that 20 years ago, 25 years ago. So. Welcome to my world. Yeah. <laughs> well, welcome to my world today. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. I do live in Lufkin. I commute every day back and forth to Tyler. You don't live in Tyler? No, sir. Okay. Okay, my name is Sheila Torres. I'm the Governmental Affairs Director for the Greater Tyler Association of Realtors. <clears throat> and as you know, the Greater Tyler Association of Realtors is the voice of real estate in this area. As mentioned before, um, we appreciate the time and effort that's- right, and, and you have five minutes, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's been our good fortune to speak with Judge Moran and the commissioners at the county also, so we had took this time to, to speak with you as well. Our proposition is simple. We object to any increase in property taxes. As we all know, property taxes will impact the real estate market and buyers and sellers alike will be forced to factor estimated taxes to make purchasing decisions. Even if the tax rate goes down from last year, it is still a property tax increase if it was to bring in more revenue. Year after year of increased property taxes will cause current homeowners to not be able to afford to keep their homes. And it will be impossible for those wanting to participate in the American dream of being a homeowner to not be able to do so. If taxes are continually increased, the market will most certainly change when buyers are considering purchasing a home. The median sales price of a home in this area currently in July of 2019 was $229,000, which is a 6.5% increase from last year, with the largest percentage of homes being in the 100 to 200,000 price range. The median household income in this area is just over $50,000. According to A&M research, for every $1,000 increase in the price of a home, this price is out 22,000 people of purchasing a home. We must ask ourselves who is being harmed by increased property taxes. Realtors abide by a code of ethics. They, place, they pledge themselves to, promote, to protect and promote the interest of their clients. It is with this intent we ask you not to place the burden of balancing the budget solely on the backs of property owners. Governor Abbott himself has stated he would like to see property taxes abolished altogether. And we, look for you, we urge you to look for other avenues to balance the budget to keep families in their homes, thus allowing them to continue to be a valued part of this, community, of this community. In closing, it is our belief that there should be a way to accomplish the goals and ideas as set forth by this council in considering the budget without homeowners shouldering the burden placed on them by increasing property taxes. It should not be a penalty to own a home. Okay, well, uh, I will just say several things to re respond to that. Uh, I, I would assume that being in the real estate industry, it's a good idea to have nice streets, 
to sell a house on. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. So how do we pay for streets? Well, there should be avenues without raising property taxes. Uh, well, there's not. Uh, because if you would have reviewed our budget, our budget has no extra fluff in it. We have had a history in this community of when we had extra money, we would put it into street maintenance. When I came to this council, we were putting maybe $300,000 in street maintenance. When we did that, we were not keeping up with the quality of our streets. So if you want to sell houses and you want your customers to be happy, which I want them to be, is we have to have money to take care of those streets. We have, I have increased and I have pushed two cent increase. We have a consultant that was very specific that said, we're going to start losing our position in streets if we do not do two cents, if we do not do $1.5 million. And if the quality of the streets go down, you can't sell houses. Another issue we have had is during that downturn when we had sales tax uh, declining with the oil price, I, just like I just said earlier, we had to cut public safety. Your home buyer expects the great quality of fire department work and police work that we do. We uh, are never going to cut that budget again. So yes, we have some excess from the last two years. We are putting that into a reserve fund, different than the last place that you went and argued and, and debated. Uh, we don't, uh, our cash reserves are less than 10%. <clears throat> We have a requirement for 15%. We do that based on accrual accounting, not real cash. Now we're going to have about 8% real cash in hand. So the next time that we have a decline, and there will be a next time, then uh, we will dip into that. We also have fallen behind in years past. And so last year we hired two new policemen, two new firemen. This year, we're hiring two new policemen, two new firemen. That is critical to a growing community. We cannot put that off any longer. However, with being very uh, compliant with state law, you never heard me say one thing in this cycle about SB2. SB2 is state law. We have a 3.5% cap for next year. If we had a 3% cap, 3.5% cap for this year, we would abide by that. It starts next year. We have to be in solid position. If we have the lowest tax rate in the state of Texas, maybe your argument is, is good if you lived in Waco, and I don't know what Lufkin charges, okay? But if you have the lowest tax rate in the state, that 3.5% is a much smaller increase. We have to be in the proper position for the next 10 years when we're working with that three and a half percent increase because we will abide by the law and we'll follow the law and whatever the state does and what i'll also tell you is the property tax doesn't even pay for the police department did you know that no sir okay 42 percent of these of these funds are coming from uh sales tax about 10% is coming from franchise and fines, okay? The police department budget is larger than what we bring in uh, for uh, uh, the police department. So I, I want to make sure that I will spend as much time as you want. If you want to go over the budget line by line, there is not fluff in this budget. And I know that you have a great speech worked out based on- uh, Facts and uh, figures. No, actually, actually not for Tyler you don't have good facts and figures. But for the state argument as a whole, for a lot of the cities that had large tax rates, you got a great argument. But the argument doesn't fit here. And, and I know your industry very well. I've been in it 34 years, so I get it fully, okay? Sorry, I just feel a little I appreciate your time. Yes. yes. Lufkin's tax rate is 51.38 cents, sir. Okay. Well, Lufkin would be a good place to go talk to. Yes. <laughs> Yes, you, you, Sir, you can. First, I want to thank you for being here. And I want you to know that I live in North Tyler, and my streets have needed repair for quite some time. So I voted for this because I wanted to see my streets increased and improved in North Tyler. And by the time I pay for new tires that I buy very frequently because of bad streets or repairing my vehicle maintenance, 
I, I embraced the increase in our taxes. So. Again, I appreciate thank your time you. and effort. Thank we invite you, very you to much. come and address our membership. I will. I, I do it every year, by the way. Okay. And so I'll be more than happy to be there. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I, I, not, do we have any other cards? No, sir. I don't okay. Not, not <clears throat> seeing any other cards. Are there any comments or questions for the city manager? No. Mayor, I move uh, to uh, close the public hearing. Close the public hearing. I have a motion and a second. second. All in favor, we're at this time, uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll close the public hearing and then we'll go on to uh, Z1. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Our first item is for a request to change the zoning to bring the existing single family home into conformance with the Unified Development Code, the UDC. They, uh, they are requesting this, uh, this zone change in order to sell their, their home. So the bank is requiring it that, that it is consistent with our Unified Development Code that allows for single family use. And in this location, you can see that it's predominantly surrounded by single family, as well as industrial, which is the location of the Hood Packaging Corporation. The future land use guide identifies this area as single family, medium low density, and this request is consistent with the guide. Uh, this uh, would request would match the single family homes that are currently along Industrial Avenue, as you can see here in the aerial. And of the 19 notices mailed, zero returned in favor or in opposition to this request. And the zoning, the Planning and Zoning Commission by 5-0 vote recommends approval to change the zoning to R1B single family. Any questions of Heather on this one? Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Make a motion. Uh, second. Motion by McKellar, uh, uh, second by Sutton. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Z2. This next request is to change the zoning to C2 general commercial. The applicant is requesting the use for the existing building for a temporary RV sales while a permanent service center uh, and showroom and cell facility is constructed on the adjoining property. This subject property was previously the location of the Chambly's Rose Nursery. It was annexed in 2010 as part of a development agreement with the city of Tyler. All the adjacent properties are located outside of the city limits and have no zoning. The properties to the north, east, and south are undeveloped, and the property to the west is the current location of Tyler Oaks RV Resort. This would amend the future land use guide to general commercial. The staff has informed the applicant that it would be recommended to annex the remaining property into the city limits if they plan to request city utility services in the future. Of the five notices mailed, zero returned in favor, zero in opposition, and the planning commission by a 5-0 vote recommends approval to change the zoning to C2 general commercial. Questions of Heather? I, I do have two cards. Uh, um, in uh, both are marked in favor and I believe they're the applicants is that correct yes, sir. is that right uh, <clears throat> if there are any questions of the applicant no. is that okay yes, sir. I mean if y'all come up and speak if you want Not if you have questions, sir. okay <laughs> great uh, then I'll entertain a motion so moved uh, a motion second. to approve a second by Westbrook? No, uh, by Warren. I'm sorry. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And that motion was to approve. Uh, Z3, thank you all for being here. This is a request located. Y'all can stay for the rest of the meeting, too, if you want. <laughs> yeah, I respect that. I'm looking forward to that moment, too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
This request is located off of East Grande and it is a request to zone to C2 General Commercial for commercial development. We have a mixture of multifamily, which is undeveloped. The property was recently rezoned to from agricultural to RMF, and you're not seeing that on the map just yet, but it, it was rezoned to multifamily. To the north and west is zoned agricultural and is also undeveloped, and to the south, industrial in the purple, and then agricultural, and those properties contain commercial properties. This would amend the future land use guide to single family, medium low density to general commercial. And the property is located along this major arterial street. The applicant owns the property to the south and is planning to construct a new access from Grande Boulevard to the office building located to, to the adjacent property. They also plan to develop the rest of the subject property for future commercial office uses as well. Of the 13 notices mailed, zero returned in favor or in opposition to this request, and the Planning and Zoning Commission by 5-0 vote recommends approval. I have a question. Sure. How far will the curb cut on Grindy be from that intersection at Paloxy? Is that an issue at all? Uh, it shouldn't be an issue. They, they will have to follow the minimum standard, which requires a certain length uh, away from that intersection. Thank you. Any other questions? No questions. I move to approve C3. Motion by Westbrook. Second. Second by McGee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. This is a request to change the zoning to C2 General Commercial, and the applicant <coughs> is trying to construct a tattoo studio. In this area, you see a mixture of industrial with single family home development, a tire shop, and an undeveloped lot, as well as general commercial with a restaurant, and then R2 two family zoning, which is the location of single family homes and an undeveloped lot. This is consistent with the future land use guide that identifies this area's general commercial, as you can see in the red color. One portion of the property is used as a warehouse, and the other portion is requested to be used as a tattoo studio. Of the 13 notices mailed, zero returned in favor or in opposition to this request and the Planning and Zoning Commission by 5-0 vote recommends approval to change the zoning to C2 General Commercial. <coughs> Questions of Heather? I move to approve Z4. Second. Uh, a motion by Warren, a second by Westbrook. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. C5. And our final request is for a closure in order to replat the right of way for development purposes. This is an unimproved portion of what was formerly an extension of Reek Road. To the north is zoned for multifamily and is currently undeveloped. To the south and east are for restricted professional office, also undeveloped, and to the west is single family and undeveloped. Previously, an unimproved portion of Reek Road was uh, beginning at the intersection of Reek Road and Eagles Nest Boulevard, and continuing west approximately 400 feet was closed. The portion of the road that the applicant is requesting to close was included in that previous closure. However, the replatting of this portion was not done within the six months that's required. And so this is really just a cleanup item and they wish to close that now and, and go through the platting process to incorporate it into the property. Of the five notices mailed, one was returned in favor, zero in opposition, and the Planning and Zoning Commission by 5-0 vote recommends approval. Questions of Heather? None. Uh, we have a card <coughs> from Mr. Bradbury if there's any questions. Uh, no questions. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve C5. Second. Motion by Westbrook, a second by Suddeth. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. That's the zoning portion. Hello, Sherry. Good, good morning, Mayor, uh, City Council, good morning. Mr. Bouchard. Good morning. 
Uh, my name is Sherry Pettit. I'm the person manager for the city of Tyler. I have with me uh, Mark Bombick uh, with First Choice and Freddie Chan Sanchez, who's also with First Choice. Um, you have before you M1. It's a request that the city council considers ratifying a contract extension with TXU through First Choice Cooperative Purchasive, Purchasing Cooperative for the purchase of electricity beginning May 1st, 2024 and extending through April 30th, 30, 2031. So that's a seven year contract for our uh, electricity. Uh, to give you some information, what we have currently, the city of Tyler purchases an average of 53,545,000 kilowatts per hour annually, which is 551 points of delivery um, out in the city. Uh, the current contract began in May 1st, 2017 and expires in 2024. And we pay right now 0 0.036 uh, per kilowatt hour. Um, the electricity started dropping uh, for long-term contracts uh, due to a drop in natural gas prices. So, uh, we was contacted by First Choice and a few other people regarding a contract extension at this time. Um, we conducted an, a Lean Six Sigma analysis to determine the market rates along with other additional information to make sure that we're getting the best price we could for the city. Uh, on August 20th, after we'd done all our evaluations, First Choice and TXU had a price refreshing uh, scheduled and at that time, they offered a price of 0 0.0268 cents, 86 cents. Um, so uh, at that time, we determined that was extremely good. Plus, we had other uh, options and benefits uh, on that. So due to the volatility in electricity pricing, the city was required to execute the contract on the day the refresh rates were received. So prior to that, we had a uh, legal department, which I want to thank them for taking the time. They did it really quickly. They reviewed uh, all the contracts and everything, so it would be in order. Um, so we signed that contract, uh, and the, it was extended. So our contract is extended. Our current contract goes from 17 to 2024. So this contract extension goes from 2024 to 2031. So to give a, a sort of a dollar amount figure on what 0 0.036 to 0 0.02686 does uh, with our kilowatt usage is over the seven year contract, we will be saving $3.4 million wow. on the mm. 0.009. Right. Uh, that's an extremely large amount uh, for the city. Uh, also, we have additional savings and benefits. We consolidated all of our ES, ESID numbers, uh, put them under one group. It's under TXU now, so uh, we don't have multiple uh, vendors we're purchasing electricity from. All the electricity <coughs> is purchased under our current contract and our extended contract that we have. Uh, we also have uh, on with that contract extension, $15,000 a year in greenback rebate dollars. Um, that's for the seven years, that's $105,000. Uh, and that starts in 2024 and goes to 2031. The uh, greenback dollars can be used to help fund new energy efficiency projects or offset the cost of existing projects, such as if we want to put LED lights uh, down the street or convert so to solar uh, emergency uh, upgrade HVAC anything that has to do with energy efficiency we can use that money toward uh, there's also a $2,500 donation for the heart of Tyler downtown revitalization effort um, even though our contract starts in 2024 to 2031 they made this money available now because this is an ongoing project right now um, uh, there is with our signing of this contract, it also helps local businesses in this area uh, who um, are a part of the first choice group. So they get their uh, electricity at our rate as well. 
um, TXU donates uh, trees for the downtown revitalization, revitalization program. Uh, and they also work uh, with possible green energy to help in, with the sustainability of goals and grant writing. So we, we have a lot of different benefits uh, from this contract. So it is recommended that the City Council ratify a contract extension with TXU through First Choice Purchasing Cooperative for the purchase of electricity beginning May 1st, 2024 and extended through April 30th, 2031. Any questions? Just curious, who are some of the other big players that are part of the contract? Uh, yeah. um, we have, uh, my name is Mark Bondick. Uh, we have South, Southside Bank is in this, UT Health is in this, uh, about 13 other local businesses. Um, I have the names if you'd like them. Um, and we have five churches in the group, uh, 11 healthcare facilities that are part of the group. The entire group's about 130 million kilowatt hours in uh, this extension. Can a residential guy get on that contract? Good question. Okay, so any other any other real questions? <laughs> All right, I think y'all are great. I move to approve M1. Second. Uh, motion by Warren, um, second by McGee. Uh, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. Great job. Thank you for the session. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Sherry. Good job. Thank you. That's good. Big money. M2. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Title Water Utilities is pleased to present to you the pipe bursting package uh, on page 41 and 47 of the consent decree. Um, you will find that there are condition assessments and remedial measures uh, that are required in the consent decree. Um, and this is an ongoing process. And Mr. Newhouse, our compliance engineer, will talk to you in detail about that. All right, good morning, Council, Mayor. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, as Dr. Johnson indicated, we are talking about uh, item M2 in which uh, we're going to talk about the uh, pipe burst package that uh, continues the work uh, that we've been uh, ongoing here for the group one uh, assessment that was done back in 17. So just, uh, you've seen this slide before. We've got the Western Seal, Eastern Seal, basically the two coating packages for manholes that have been approved. Work is, uh, should be beginning on the third, this coming Tuesday on the first package. And I added on the saving, or on the, on the slide here, the savings that we've realized over the estimated construction costs that were put, uh, put forth by pipeline analysis when they did the assessment. So again, this is just savings on the construction side. So 23.1 and 17.5% on those two packages. The, uh, the, the CIPP uh, is, uh, was approved. We've seen a 19.7% <coughs> savings on that. And now the by board, I'm sorry, the pipe burst package was again a by board uh, contract. We went to the by board and solicited uh, proposals from four different bidders on the by board vetted those and came up with this uh, uh, recommendation here I'm fixing to talk to you about. So this was the largest savings so far, 30.7% uh, on the, what the estimated construction costs were. The, uh, uh, when we're talking about pipe bursting, we're, we're taking the existing pipe uh, that's in the ground and we are uh, just basically dragging a new pipe through it. Uh, there's, a, there's a bursting head that splits the old pipe and then we drag in a new pipe right in place. Before we have to do, do that, we have to dig down and disconnect the taps so we don't damage them. And then of course, when we're completed, they're reconnected. So uh, the pipe's gotta be cleaned first, it's gotta be inspected first, because if there's some, uh, an obstruction, obviously it could make that, that boring go the wrong direction. So that's all part of this work. It's, other than CIPP, it's some of the least intrusive uh, work that we'll be seeing because there's just a, a pit on each end, basically one manhole and the other manhole. So it's uh, 
it's a very uh, a common job that uh, is becoming more and more common, and I think it's going to be a good, uh, a good uh, uh, bit of work here and a good project. We've already done a little bit of this in the city, uh, but I'm not exactly familiar with, with where it was. I just have heard that we've done some of this elsewhere. Uh, this again is uh, we're focused on basins 8 and 15. You can see there the, uh, the brown maroonish color there in the, in the center. That's where this work will be taking place. Uh, of course, phase two, just so you know, that'll be basin 13. That'll be uh, coming on shortly here uh, after uh, we get started on that. Uh, our proposals, uh, inland pipe rehabilitation, uh, specifically the, the IPR South Central uh, was the lowest uh, bidder. Uh, followed by Vortex Turnkey Solutions. We are, we're already working with them on one of the manhole packages and the CIPP work. Uh, Southern Trenchless Solutions, we're working with them on the other uh, manhole coating package. And then in situ form technologies, they were the, uh, the, the highest and you can see the numbers there. And those percentages are how much higher they were than the, than the low, uh, than the recommended uh, proposal here. Uh, so we are, with that, for item M2, <coughs> recommending that uh, you allow the uh, city manager to enter into a contract with IPR South Central. Uh, they are the largest uh, pipe bursting company in the nation. Uh, obviously, they're very experienced and qualified. And uh, again, after vetting their references, we feel, feel good about this work. So the total there is $2,119,511. Any questions? Move to approve M2. Uh, uh, a motion to approve. Second. Uh, by McGee, a second by Westbrook. Any other questions? I got one. So how, how about, uh, um, where does this put us on Basin 8? Where? Yeah, does where does it put us in the process? 8 and 15. So, I mean, we're doing the, the pipe bursting, and then we're still going to have to come back and do some larger projects in the, those, oh, still, well, those two basins or are we okay the, so so all of those projects other than the manholes because the manholes were again all over the city right those right. are so right. for basins 8 and 15 we're, we're, we've got the CIPP work the, the lining the spike yes. work we've still got another package of uh, open cut okay and yeah, okay. then there's some point repairs now the point repairs the, right. the footages have changed a little bit. Some of those point repairs, there were so many of them that they just moved into, we might as well just pipe burst or we might as well right. uh, do some other type of remediation than just dig up this pipe in a bunch of places. So, so we still have two more, two more uh, packages, if you will, uh, to, to look so at. So this is the process that generally we're gonna go through for each basin? Or little groups of basins? Well, actually, the, the, the phase two, we're going to take a different approach. We haven't, or we're thinking about it. We haven't gotten there yet and decided exactly how that's going to look, but we're looking at simplifying that one a little bit so we don't have so many different packages. But I guess but, but the, yes. the, the group that you're in now, the basins you're in now, uh, many of these pipes are over 100 years old or older. Yes, sir. I mean, so these are very... And 13 is going to be is very similar in, in yeah, that same way. Yes. Yeah, that's what yes. I thought. Looking at the uh, the areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I just wanted a point of information. So yeah, we've got this divided up over eight years, so we'll be looking at different basins, you know, ongoing. So yes, when we're done with this, we should be done with everything in basin uh, eight and fifteen. But Although next year we'll have some additional manholes just because of the way it's. And it's out. very obvious we're starting with the very oldest pipes first. That's right. We, which the, is the way it should be. That, that's basically what pipeline analysis did was they recommended the most critical first. Right, makes sense mm -hmm. to me. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you guys. M3. This is actually Deborah's eye. Oh, oh Deborah's up. No, you're you're going to be 01 in just a minute. So, Deborah, you go ahead. You can stay up there if you want to. You know, sit down. Thank you, um, Mayor and Council. Um, as you know, Tyler City Co. sets out his regular City Council meetings to be on the second and fourth Wednesdays of each month, but to enable the uh, Mayor and the City Council members to attend the TML Texas Municipal League annual conference. It is being recommended that the regular city council meeting for Wednesday, October 9th, 
be changed to Tuesday, October 9th, 2019 at 9 a.m. October I'm 8th. sorry, Tuesday, October 8th, yeah. uh, 2019 at 9 a.m. to enable uh, council to attend the TML annual conference. Move to approve in three. Uh, motion by Warren. Second. Second by Suddeth. Um, Y'all have fun at that, that conference. I'd I not go. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. So now we're on to 01. I apologize, Mayor Council. I'm just a little bit anxious about it. Well, good. <laughs> we want you to be excited about your job every day, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, we want to thank you for the opportunity to discuss the water conservation plan uh, under the Texas Water Code, Chapter 11, and Title 30 of the Texas Administrative Code, Chapter 288. The City of Tyler. Tyler Water Utilities uh, is required to develop and implement and submit updates uh, on the water conservation plan and implementation implementation reports to the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality and also to the Texas Water Development Board uh, on May the first of each year. Uh, our professional engineer and manager of water utilities treatment, Ms. Dietz, uh, will give you the details on that. Dr. Johnson. Good morning, Good Mayor morning. and Council. Good morning. Um, the item before you is an amendment to Chapter 19 of the City Ordinance related to the City's Water Conservation and Emergency Demand Management Plan. Uh, in November 2005, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality mandated that all water systems serving the public with over 3,300 connections uh, were required to implement, develop and implement a water conservation and drought contingency plan. The City of Tyler adopted the water conservation plan originally in July of 2006. The TCEQ and the Texas Water Development Board require that all water conservation plans be updated every five years and be implemented through city ordinance. The City of Tyler did their last update in 2014. The 2019 update is based on Tyler Water, the Tyler Water Utility Profile information from 2014 through 2018. So the, the five-year update to the water conservation, let me make sure I, ooh. Oh, it's yes. been on this slide, I guess. Okay, so the, excuse me, the, the five-year update to the water conservation plan, emergency demand management plan includes updated quantifiable goals uh, for water usage in gallons per capita per day. So the goal for total water use is a 10% reduction in 10 years from the historical five-year average of 230 gallon per capita day to 206 gallon per capita day. The goal for residential water use is a 6% reduction in 10 years from 105 to 99 gallon per capita day. The goal for total water loss is a 10% reduction in 10 years from 40 gallon per capita day to 36 gallon per capita day. Uh, the five-year update also updated water utility data such as water produced, water sold, water demand and population estimates and projections. It also defined stage numbers and tied them to each uh, condition of the emergency demand management plan such as stage one is mild drought condition, stage two is moderate drought condition and so on. It also uh, corrected some spelling and grammar and made some minor clarifications to make it more readable and accurate. So it, it's recommended that the City Council adopt an ordinance amending Tyler City Code Chapter 19, Article 10, in order to update quantifiable goals for water usage and water utility data as reported in the City's five-year Water Conservation and Emergency Demand Management Plan as required by the TCEQ and the Texas Water Development Board. Thank you for your presentation. Are there mm -hmm. any questions of Ms. Deeds? 
No questions. Thank you very much for your Thank hard you. work. I'd entertain a motion to approve. Motion. Uh, motion by McKellar. Second. Uh, second by uh, Senate. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. O2. May and Council, uh, the state legislature was busy lately, so this is, has to do with House Bill 2439. That and the way this is will affect the city of Tyler, we're talking about our uh, chapter six and our ordinances for the city. And basically, what amounts to is a they, it's effective September the 1st, 2019, and they, they it basically just says that the city cannot require black products or alterations or anything that's more stringent than the last three code cycles. So the city of Tyler is under the 2015 IBC IRC building code. We just passed that in August. So we, we've gotten up to speed on our, where the codes are really in the city. The state legislator decided to pass this, and I'm really not sure why, but uh, it doesn't, we, we went well, through our chapter six, and it's like we don't have very many things it well, affects. Well, the, the, the only reason. They, they did that is other cities yeah. we're, we're different than other cities that's true so it did not it really doesn't, it doesn't impact us it really doesn't hardly even affect us no, but it's, it it's a procedure we have to go through to get the council to understand sure. that we're abiding by the law and, and uh, there's, there's just a few things in our in our chapter six that me and jake went through and looked through and found so it's our guys will never even know that really it happened but so the recommendation you know basically is for the city council to adopt the attached ordinance, and, and we put the copy of the or, you know the ordinances and everything, and then what the law says in here, so you can look anyway. Uh, have identified affected, I mean, amending chapter six of the code of ordinance of the city of Tyler, Texas, by deleting the local regulations related to building products, materials, or methods for the construction, rehabilitation, or alteration of most residential and commercial buildings that are more stringent than regulations found in any of the last three published national model codes. Yeah, Tim, Tim this, is, this is meant for, for people like Austin, that I know. actually. Yeah, it's, they, uh, uh, their city council has basically what become a uh, uh, homeowners association yeah. and a building uh, uh, compliance type of operation. We, we don't do any of that. I mean, we, uh, uh, we allow our citizens right. to make their that's, choices on the color right. and materials that they want to put on their their private property. So it doesn't affect us, but I mean, um, um, I would imagine a city council meeting in uh, uh, Austin will take a couple hours on this one. That's mm -hmm. true. So that's not our problem though. No. Right. So thank you very much for, mm -hmm. for, for that presentation. Move to approve on two. Motion by Westbrook. Second. Second by McGee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Op opposed? The ayes have it. At this time, uh, can uh, Ed, I uh, want to spend some time with Cassandra on B1 uh, to talk about. Uh, uh, you can take like a, as far as the yeah, I, break or yeah, I need to take a 10 minute break, but you want, can we go ahead and pass the consent agenda? Oh, yes, sir. Move to approve the consent okay. agenda as presented. Second. A motion by Westbrook, a second by Warren to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. So at this time, we're going to take about a 10-minute recess. Y'all are welcome to stay. We encourage you to be a part of city government. So uh, even if it's 15 minutes, y'all stay. We are in recess. At this time, we'll come back from the short recess. Uh, I'm very sorry I left uh, my notes at home, so I had to get regather my thoughts um, and so at this time uh, I'm going to work along with uh, Cassandra uh, on the uh, board appointments and uh, so what what we'll do is we have a full list and then we'll just go through and begin discussing uh, that list okay on an airport board advisory board and I believe You'll see all the members looking down 
because our computer screen is down here and uh, they all have this sheet of paper. So don't think that we're not, um, uh, that they're not concentrating on this because they are, they're not just looking down. But on the airport advisory board, we currently um, have uh, three people to be reappointed. And on the other, um, I'd like to uh, just say that we'll pass for a moment. Uh, uh, we do like to get the recommendation from uh, um, the board. And so we haven't had their recommendation yet. So um, the other three members have done great service. So can we uh, approve the three names in yellow at this time and reappoint them? And that's Robbie Campbell, John Barber, and James Wynn. Uh, could I have a motion to approve those three? Move to approve Robert, John, and James. Second. Uh, motion by Warren, a second by Sellers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Then uh, if you would uh, get that recommendation and, and, and let us know. Okay. Then uh, on the Animal Care Advisory Board, uh, we have three positions and we have three current members that are stating their interest interest to serve, but we don't have applications for two of those. So at this time, uh, we have an indication, but we don't have their forms. So Cassandra will bring that back uh, at one of the next meetings and let us know. For but the other two. For the other two, but we have one, so we could go ahead and reappoint Mary Clifford at this time. Move to appoint Mary Clifford. Motion by Westbrook. Second. Uh, second by McGee. So we will reappoint. Uh, oh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We will reappoint Mary Clifford, and then we will wait and see if the other two board members get you that okay. information. Board of adjustment uh, uh, we have uh, we will come back on that item is that correct or do you want to go ahead we have four positions to fill and you're still in con trying to get into contact with two of the current board members? Well, I did contact them, and I haven't received an application back. From you haven't two. received the application back? Um, I would... Let's come back to that one. Let's come back to that one. On the Civil Service Commission, the next, uh, we have one position to fill, and we have... Uh, uh, Lee Correa, uh, she has served, and so she wants to be reappointed. So can I, I'd entertain a motion to reappoint. Motion to approve, uh, A motion by McKellar. Second. Second by Sutton. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. For Ms. Correa, aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Construction Board of Adjustment and Appeals. We have two current members uh, that want to um, come back. And do we have another? I'm nominating Alfred Pate the third. You have. Um, so Councilman McGee is suggesting that the third person would be Alfred Pate the um, third. So that is three. Um, would you like to make a motion sure. to appoint the two current, Gian Dietz, John McKinney, and Alfred Payton? Make a motion to uh, appoint John Dietz, and John McKinney, and Alfred Payton III to the Construction Board of Adjustments and Appeals. We have, okay. we have a motion and a second by Sellers. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, <coughs> we'll come back to the Disability Issues Review Board. When we have some more applicants, have since sales tax board is complete. Uh, historical preservation board, we have three to fill. Um, 
suggesting um, Michael Hurley, Tracy Hurst, and Dorothy Franks uh, to fill those positions. I'd entertain them. Can I make a motion? Okay, I just make a motion for Michael Hurley, Tracy Hurst, and Dorothy Franks to be on the Historical Preservation Board. Second. In a second by Councilman Warren. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. The Industrial Development Corporation, uh, we will um, uh, come back to that one as well. <coughs> Um, hmm. In fact, I, I, I changed my mind. Uh, I'd, I'd like to, uh, to make a, I'd like to suggest Joanne Hampton, Claude Henry, Timothy Hunt and Michael Donnelly for those positions because there's four to fill. Okay. Can I make a motion? motion. Is that a motion? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, motion by McKellar for Joan Hampton, Claude Henry, Timothy Hunt, and Michael Donnelly. Um, Second. No. Sorry. Yes. I believe Michael. No, no, no. Okay. I'm sorry. The board of adjustments we, we didn't do yet, right? Right. Oh, I'm, I'm, okay. so I'm, you're gonna I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on. First <coughs> Michael Donnelly is first on first choice. choice for board of adjustments, but we did not make any appointments. So you still, he still. Oh, we. I'm sorry, man. You can do Mitch Henderson. Well, I take it back then. I'm sorry. I think I made a mistake there. <laughs> so let's pass on this one. Bring it back. Yeah, let's 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 pass. Thank you. Sorry, Shirley. <laughs> I didn't know Michael Donnelly was on the first choice on Board of Adjustment. Uh, I apologize. Keep Tyler Beautiful Board, which is an awesome board. Uh, every member that's on there wanted to uh, reapply? Yes, sir. Is that right? Okay. And appoint a chair. So uh, I suggest that we, all the yellow names, um, Shannon, Lisa, Christina, Joseph, John, Jesse, Frank, and Daniel be reappointed. And they, um, uh, uh, for the chair, I th think Archie Castleberry yes, is being suggested. So is that a, um, um, I'd like to make a motion then to do all that. Second. A second by McGee. Did you get all that? I did. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Library board, we, we still need three more applicants, so you'll... Uh, on the Main Street board... Um, Mr. Yes. Mr. Mayor, on the Main Street board, I would like to uh, also add Ed Moore former councilman Ed Moore to that list. Well, uh, I've heard of him. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, and then um, the other names uh, recommended, uh, um, I, I think two of them, Hart Tyler gets two positions, right? Right. Hart Tyler does get two. They recommend Carlene Dark and Russell Patterson. Their Carlene Dark and Russell Patterson for their slots. They <coughs> and then um, a recommendation has been made for Chad Humphreys, right? Right. Uh, Marty Crawford. Mm -hmm. Sherry Lee. Um, I think it was. Uh, Um, I think Stan Anderson, William Childs, and Sam Rickman. So the question is, is, Sher is Sherry, Sherry's actually going to be, she's somewhat on staff, is that correct? Right. Right. Since she receives money 
from pot money as well from the city of Tyler, she gotcha. really wouldn't be eligible to serve. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for answering that. So, um, so we have one too many. The current list that we have that yes. I've heard is in William Childs, Stan Anderson, Russell Patterson, Marty Crawford, Chad Humphreys, Carlene Dark, and Ed Moore, uh, which is seven. Three, four, okay. five, six, seven. The, the names again, Ed? Uh, going down the list, William Child, Stan Anderson, Russell Patterson, Marty Crawford, Chad Humphreys, Carlene Dark, and Ed Moore. Okay. Do you want to make a motion with that list? Yes. What about Ed? Ed, Ed on, he on. would be on that Ed list, Moore, is right. that right? Yes, it, yeah, I added him on. It, he's not on your list there. This was uh, Councilman McGee had made mention of the request for Ed Moore um, a minute ago, and so we had, I just wrote him. Okay. So I'm, give I'm, us that list one more time. Please. I'll make a motion with the list. I'll make a motion to appoint Marty Crawford, Ed Moore, Chad Humphreys, Clint Childs, Stan Anderson, Carlene Dark, and Russell Patterson to the uh, Tyler Main Street Board. Okay, that's a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second from McKellar. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, neighborhood Revitalization Board. Uh, so we have two first choices that are currently serving, Vicki Jackson and John Barnett, and they do want to come back? Yes, sir. Um, so I would make a motion to approve uh, Jackson and Barnett. Is there a second? Second. Second from Westbrook. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. Northeast Texas Public Health District Board. Move to reappoint Kimberly Ashley. Second. Uh, I have a motion from Westbrook and a second from Warren. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, the ayes have it. On the parks board, um, we have three that would like to be reappointed, re and then we have six positions. Um, and uh, so we, 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 we have a person that uh, her the first choice and ch second choice um, that she had were uh, filled, but uh, we would really like for her to serve. Who's this? Shirley? Shawana Flowers. So what I will suggest is Karen Christie, Justin Finley, Jim Cousineau. Mm -hmm. uh, I always call him Jim because it's easier. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul Wick, Justin Hargrave, and Shawana Flowers. Uh, Brian was extremely instrumental in the Splasher project and actually donated his services for the splash pad. And he, he was Fitzpatrick. He is in Not with Equius. Yes, I know. And he is an excellent human being and an excellent professional. Uh, however, um, uh, there is a lot of work that comes through uh, Steve, Steve's office, okay. and I would prefer not having any sort of conflict there. Okay, I'm good there. But I will tell you that we, we definitely appreciate all okay. his work because he's. We also use Aquius for numerous different projects, and so there could have possibly been. Yeah, that okay. could good. could good. be Why for fees. Okay. So I didn't. I, if he's watching, I didn't want him to be excluded. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, he, oh, no. <laughs> he, he's, he's not excluded, and he's a great guy, but I just didn't want to have any uh, future conflicts out of the, good. the item. I think it would be, uh, and I'm sure he would agree with that fully, too. So um, those would be, that would be my motion. Karen Christie, Justin Finley, Jim, Paul Wick, Justin Hargrove, and Shawana Flowers. I make a motion that we accept the six. Okay, a motion from McKellar. Second. Second. From Suddeth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair. We also need a chair. Oh, we need um, a chair? Mm -hmm. 
up. I believe Karen Christie served the longest. Yes. Uh, yes. And so uh, I would, since I'm making motions now, I will actually make a motion to uh, appoint her as chair. I second that motion. And a second from Councilman McKellar. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, opposed, the ayes have it. And on the P&C Commission, uh, we have five positions and we have three current members who have all served very well. So uh, I'd like to suggest reappointing them and then. I'd like to nominate Thomas Nichols and John Landis to join them. Okay. So I move to appoint Pamela Phoenix, Jimmy Reed, Blair Swain, Thomas Nichols, and John Landis to the Planning and Zoning Commission Board. I have a motion. Second. Uh, second by Warren. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. And we'll bring back the Traffic Safety Board later as well. Uh, so, Stephanie has asked that uh, council go ahead and appoint a chair for the Main Street Board. Okay. Let's Have a recommendation. That's what I was asking. <laughs> Question Who's been there the longest? Well, this it's a brand new. Oh, this is the brand, 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 brand new one. That's correct. Yes. Have we appointed them? Well, I mean, yeah. Well, that's kind of rude, but. <laughs> 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 Share their own. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I understand. So, um, I do. You know, I think that Ed Moore would do a great job sharing their own. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, actually. But, I mean, obviously, we have some very strong candidates who represent downtown on that board as well. Yeah, but I, I, I think uh, former, former council, council member would be, yeah, that would be, great. Would be appropriate. Be I make a motion that Ed Moore share yeah, that. Yeah, I agree. Second. Right. Motion by McKellar, second by Westbrook. I think that's a good choice. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. And Mayor, did you want to go back to Board of Adjustment to review that one any further? I don't or think so. Back later, meeting? later meeting? Yeah. Uh, I, I, uh... Well, hold on. Let me go. Yeah. Th did you want to reappoint uh, David Hudson and then for the other three, as far as continue application or just give the consideration to others? Um, uh, yes, I would like to reappoint. David Hudson at this time. <coughs> so I'll make a move. I'm sorry. You want to do that? I'll do that. I'll move to appoint David Hudson back to the Board of Adjustments. Second. Uh, that's a motion in a, uh, by Westbrook, a second by Suddeth. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, and we did get, you have Miss Flowers. Thank you. She's good. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I would, I, I tell you, I, I, I would, I, I would like to make a suggestion. I would like to make a, an appointment and then we can come back to it. Here's, here's my suggestion for this board, okay? We just did David Hudson. I'd like, uh, there was an applicant for a, a, another board uh, in two slots, and I would really like to ask this guy to join this because I think he would be good at it. The Board of Adjustment would be Tim Hunt, and then uh, Michael Donnelly and Preston Smith would be the four that I'd like to fill. And I'd let's go ahead and fill Mr. Hunt in that, and then see if he would like uh, verify he would like to do it. But I. I would actually like somebody from his background uh, to be on that board. I mean, he, he's a home builder, so sometimes um, um, uh, it, it, it doesn't hurt to have that perspective 
on what is actually reasonable sometimes during that Board of Adjustment meeting. So I'm, I'm um, and I'll call him afterwards and tell him I suggested that to him. So second I'm, that. you second that? Yes, sir. So I have a motion for, we've already done Dave Dodson, so that's not in the motion, but it's Michael Donnelly, Preston Smith, and Tim Hunt to finish out the Board of Adjustments. I have a motion, Westbrook has a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, so that really gets us a long way down the road. This is always a, uh, uh, we appreciate every citizen that, that does uh, provide input and helps us on these boards and commissions. Uh, it just takes a while to kind of go through this list and, and, and uh, make sure we're getting everyone plugged in. So we appreciate everybody's involvement in the city of Tyler. So thank you for um, giving of, uh, for all the people that have been appointed or applied. Thank you for giving your time and caring for your community. And secondly, thanks to all the council members uh, for their continued uh, commitment to our community. I know we all do this uh, at no pay, but we do this because we love our community. And so I appreciate each one of y'all very much. And Mayor, just to let the public know, um, I will be bringing back uh, Disabilities Issues Review Board, Industrial Development Corporation Board, Library Board, Traffic, Airport, and Animal Care Advisory Board. Yes, that'd be awesome. Uh, so at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. City city oh, City Manager <laughs> Report. <laughs> Could have turned in there one would have been. Okay, let's do that then. <laughs> no, go ahead, sir. All right, just a couple of items then. Um, so Tyler Pounds Regional Airport received the final official boarding numbers from Frontier Airlines for the month of July. We calculate them having an 89% load factor for their first month Dude, of operations wow. in Tyler. Mm, wow. That is incredible. We hope that there remains a strong <laughs> airport location for Frontier, and American Airlines is planning to add a fifth flight beginning in September now. Uh, their boarding show growth compared to the last two years. We record a 13% increase year to date compared to the last year. So things are going very well with that. That's incredible. That's great news. Uh, to, I want you all to take note of the, with the Kaboom Blue Cross Blue Shield Community Play Build Playground uh, project that's coming up on September 21st at Gasaway Park. Uh, volunteers are needed as well as different community groups so we can, everybody can come out that morning to build together uh, for the new playground equipment at Gasaway. Uh, the annual entrance examination for the potential new firefighters uh, will be conducted on Friday, this Friday, August 30th at the Tyler Rose Garden. And then finally, I want to do give kind of a note of praise to Bob McComb with our traffic engineering department. Bob, uh, during the hot summer days for the past month, has been out there striping the Harvey Hall parking lot uh, in order to, to make sure that everybody, especially with football season coming up, uh, that there is at, everyone knows where to park and how to park. Uh, out there. Sometimes, especially at night, um, with, without the parking spaces, people get triple parked and uh, boxed in, and so this will help to prevent that. Well, you just got to watch the whole game. Mm. You, you can't do. Right. Well, and you got to wait for the people who also that were watching the full game to leave. So <laughs> that's that you correct. Can... Absolutely. <laughs> and that's all I had to say. Okay, great. So I'll entertain a uh, motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. All in favor, aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>